hang, hang tough with me. I do have, I got plenty of coffee and I, I, I just loaded the pot. So I'm, I'm ready to go. This is actually a prop we're going to use a little bit later. So this will, this will show up again. Uh, it's it, not actually a prop. I mean, there's actual coffee in it. I, I will pour it from time to time. You're, uh, you're starting early and got to warm up. I'm, I'm normally in bed by 10, so my, <laughs> it's, it's nine o'clock here. So I'll, um, I'll probably start. I yeah, we saw each other like 12 I'll hours ago. I'll start talking rubbish, but I talk rubbish anyway. So it's kind of like <laughs> people are going to go, well, it's so different to, to normal. So, uh, yeah. I feel like we just did this. Oh, well, we did just do this. I know. We did it good. this morning. The first, but... the first, if you haven't listened to the first session, so I told uh, Char a little bit earlier, I'll probably add a few things because I don't like saying the same thing twice. So I'll probably add a few things to this that didn't show up in the, in the first session. So it may, you know, skip the intro and all those other things. that Char's going to ask me about my history in podcasting. That'll all probably be the same. But as we get later in the show, that may be a little bit different than I did um, in the first one. So if you want to listen to the first one on two speed or something, just plow through it, put fast forward to see if there's anything that's anything I don't say here. Um, I bet there'll be a few different stories. I might, I might have some different questions for you. You never know. What? All right. No, I don't. No, I better, I might. <laughs> the, the, the audience might have some different questions that I hadn't. Thought. That's true. That's true. I was trying to get my kids to come up and listen to this one. I said, you know, because like the younger one and said, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a podcast. I said, oh, you want to come up and, and listen to Jim and Harry, the older one that was there the other day. Um, he goes, oh, yeah, I, I might come up and listen to Jim because he, he he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. and He's, he's got a good voice, he said. So, I like uh, Harry. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a compliment. I like that, Harry. I'll have to. I, I have to. Maybe I could be the first guest on his podcast. (laughs) Yeah. And I got you, um, it was you or Gotham, and they went with Gotham. Oh, well, I don't feel so bad about that. That's not so bad. That's probably a good choice. (laughs) When you're, when you're, how old is Harry? Uh, Well, 16 and 17. So Harry's 17, Jamie's 16. Yeah. When you're 17, you shouldn't be listening to old guys talk about podcasting. (laughs) You should be doing something different. Now, uh, it was uh, it was Miss Jan Peters who said, "Oh, can we make sure that?" Oh, I think you did as well, Richard. But can we make sure that we have one for um, you know for Amir in UK. So I'm like, mm, "Come on, Jan, where are you?" We didn't represent the United States, Charlotte. That's that's the you know, like it was. We we need to do one today at one. Can you can you swing it? Sleep. No, no, we're not going to. Those, those folks in the, and the folks in the U.S. they get me all the time, all the time. So that's fine. We're good. All right. Well, let's uh, let's kick this thing off then. And I, um, I'll thank everybody for for joining. Uh, I think you probably all know who I am. I'm Charlotte Blair. Uh, I know we've got some repeat offenders or frequent flyers join us. And um, for I think. It's only you, um, Ashanti, that's in the U.S. Anybody else in the U.S.? No, other than Jim. So I just and I'm like barely to, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not near the fire, so I was going to say I, I, um, my heart goes out to those no. of you that are affected by the fires at the moment or even the smoke that's coming in. It's um, the, the world's gone mad. So, Jim, thank you very much for joining us and getting up at very early morning to, to, to do this and share your thoughts on Uh, all things podcast the reason i set this up is um i've been thinking about doing a podcast for a while i've been a guest on other people's podcasts and high communication i love talking if i look back at my school reports it always says charlotte talk too much and i'd love to go back and say now oh i get paid to talk now so no 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 Uh, but i've thought about doing a podcast for a while and i often reach out to jim and i say hey jim what webcam do i need and hey jim you know what what microphone do I need? So I thought, oh, Jim's got this wealth of knowledge. I'll ask him all these questions. And then it, kind of this thought popped in my head of, hey, why don't we get Jim to kind of share with the coaching community? Because I'm sure there's other people out there maybe thinking of starting their own podcast or maybe you've even got your own podcast. In fact, um, give us a show of hands if anybody's already got a podcast. Jim, very good, Jim. Oh, Jamie's got half a podcast. You've got half, half a Thing going good. There. You've started. Good. Actually, I think I've seen on LinkedIn you've started to share some stuff, Jamie. So that's pretty cool. 
So I thought I'd write this list of questions that I would ask Jim um, and he'll answer them in a different way to he answered them this morning, last night, whatever it was for, it was last night for Jim, but this morning for, for, for me. So time we'll kick it up. Yeah, I know, time zones, like, where, where, are, where are we? Um, Jim, do you want to kind of share with us your background in podcasting, how long you've been doing it? Um, and I'm, we know you from Call to Coach and Theme Thursday, but where where else could we find you if we yeah. want to get more of you and listen to more of you? No, no good question. Um, actually, Esther had a question in the chat about the first session. Charlotte, how would folks, how could folks listen if they wanted to listen to the first session? How would they do yeah. that? Uh, tomorrow or the next day, I will probably upload it to, I think the easiest place to be unless Jim, you have a better idea on this one. What I've been doing is sharing it to my Google uh, shared drive and then sharing the link on the shared drive. But is there, is there a better place, Jim? That you'd yeah, you could upload it to YouTube. Uh, that would, that would probably be, um, I think you can, t I think you can take a zoom file and upload it to YouTube and oh. then just share, share the YouTube link. Okay. Yeah. Sophia's saying yeah, yes. So, so I haven't done that. But, you don't yeah. want to edit it. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Zoom files are terrible to edit, but yeah. uh, that's what, Charlotte, that's what I would do. Uh, that does limit our friends in China because they block YouTube, but so you have to kind of get around that in some, some regards, but that's kind of for, for the rest of the world, that's kind of the safest. But. Well, I'll probably, I'll probably share it in two places then. So I'll probably, you know, maybe stick a link on the Call to Coach page or if you follow yeah. me on Facebook, um, if my, if my picture um, looks like that uh, on my profile picture then if you find me on Facebook then I'll post it on there as well but I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that you've got it because I've got okay. your emails and it'll be shared places. Anyway Jim, share, share Sounds, sounds good. You, you bet the first time I heard the idea or thought of podcasting was in 2003 which you think well that's pretty early. I was at a Oracle conference at the time uh, I worked in the Oracle space. I was a database guy and I was at an Oracle conference and some folks were carrying around a bunch of heavy uh, recording equipment, audio recording equipment, and they were doing this interview thing. And I always thought I'd be a radio guy. That was one of the things I always wanted to do and never, radio doesn't pay. So I never did that. But um, uh, I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, and I don't know if they use the term, but they said, we're, we're podcasting. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And so I thought about it for, oh, I don't know, another three or four years. And I thought, you know, this is something I want to get into. But podcasting was really, really hard until about 2007, let's just say. And, and uh, I mean, it's, it's, it was even harder than it is now. Everything had to be done by hand. Um, in 2006 or so, I started listening to podcasts. And they weren't, they, again, they, we didn't even call it that. And app, the Apple standard was actually pretty, was pretty bad even at that point. And um, there were a couple apps that were doing it. And I started listening to the show called The Home Server Show. Buddy, who, a guy who had become a very good friend uh, in the future, uh, had the show and I went and downloaded it to my iPod, right? That's how we listened to podcasts in the very beginning. I had to download it, right? And I contacted him and said, hey, I'd love to be on your show. And that's actually a good principle if you're thinking about, a, if you have a podcast or you're thinking about podcasting, see if you can guest on somebody's show. It's a good way to kind of get in there and get, get your feet wet, try some things, try it out, see what you like. But um, so he said, uh, he, I, what I, he said, um, no, <laughs> actually, I've got a plan for my show and I don't need, I don't need help at this point. I'll let you do when I, I'll let you know when I do. About nine months later, he contacted me and said, yeah, I think I'm ready for you now. And so me and a couple buddies uh, jumped in there and started a long run, which would become a couple years worth of a podcasting on the home server show. That show is now gone. Um, but in 09 then, in a, or actually 2010, I started um, a, a program called Home Gadget Geeks. At the, in the day, it was called Home Tech. Another principle around podcasting is what you start with isn't what you have to end with or what it has to be. You can always be changing and doing this. This show called, was called Home Tech, and it was just all about home technology. And um, uh, I did that for a couple of years and then changed that name to Home Gadget Geeks and uh, to fit more of the network space that I was in at the time. Um, we've done 459 episodes of that. So 10 years of podcasting. Uh, I've been, it's just crazy to think I've been doing it that long. Um, 400 there. This is new information that wasn't in the first session. So you guys are, I'll say this number. We've, uh, we've probably done a thousand of these at Gallup over the last eight years. When we just kind of think about the number, they just start stacking up, right? You just start doing one after the other. 
So um, I, I've got a lot of practice. I, I'm not going to say I was a natural at this. Um, it's taken a lot of work. I have actually spent time focusing on the craft, getting better at things. Um, what helped was just doing it. Like I couldn't get better until I did it. When and Before we started the recording on this, we were talking about how awful um, Charlotte was going to go back. I mentioned the first time that the very first called the coach we do is terrible. Like it, I can't even watch it. It's so bad. Like we, Jeremy and I look scared. We look like someone scared the daylights out of us. And, um, but you can't get to two unless you've done one. And so, you know, you got to do one and then you got to do two and you just keep doing it pretty soon. You have a bunch, right. That you, you've stacked up. So Charlotte, that's kind of the, the story. I should also mention, I love talking about podcasting so much. It's why I woke up at five in the morning to be with you guys. That I have a Saturday morning show, Saturday morning here in the United States, 930 um, Central, 1030 Eastern, called Ask the Podcast Coach. And Dave Jackson, who is a podcast coach, I'm not. I mean, I, I guess I, I, I kind of could be. That's his business. Um, we get on and do an hour and a half um, of just talking about people's podcasting questions. So it's a lot like this show. So, so Charlotte, you're my Dave Jackson this morning as we talk about podcasting. So thanks for having me on. Okay. And how much do you charge to be a podcast coach? <laughs> well, so I don't, cause that conflicts a little bit with what I do for Gallup. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. I, was, I was leading you in there when you went, Oh, you know, I'm not a coach. You could be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay. Okay. To be fair though, I have charged in the past for podcast consulting so that I, I don't do any now just cause we've been so busy, but um, there was a day when I would, when I would, would folks would want more help with their podcast. And so um, I had an hourly rate and we just, you know, we, I just helped them do it that way. So I have done some, I call it more consulting than I would coaching, but, but we all know the difference between those two. I would tell them what to do. Not, <laughs> ask them good questions. <laughs> Very good. Um, so I guess the first thing that we probably need to start with is the, is the technical piece. So, yeah. um, you know, I know I asked you about you know, webcams, speakers, when we're thinking technical, what are some of the things that we need to consider? And what would be your recommendations? Yeah, so I'm gonna talk about three things. This is where you want to write something down, because I'm going to use a bunch of uh, models, model numbers, they don't make any sense. So you're going to run all right, this this part down. So there's three things technically you want to think about with podcasting, microphones, lighting, and cameras, right? And kind of in that order is what you want to handle. Microphones, uh, uh, the, the microphone that I use here, and actually I used this one for a long time. They look very identical, two different companies. So Samsung, S-O-N, not S-U-N-G, like the Korean company, but Samsung makes these microphones. Uh, and it's called a Q2U, kind of all rhymes, right? Q2U, uh, you can, they're available in most markets. So if you, if you just go out there and find you the local electronic store that sells online in your region, Amazon isn't everywhere, but Amazon is a good place to do it. Here in the United States, Sweetwater, B&H um, are some great places to be able to get that. Um, but you, I'm sure you, you, you have areas that you do it. Um, the other one is called an Audio Technica. It's spelled just like it sounds, A-U-D-I-O and then T-E-C-H. C-N-I-A, something like that. Uh, Audio Technica, I, I don't have to spell it, it's right there. I don't know. Um, ATR2100, this is where you, you got to write this one down too. ATR2100X actually is the newest version. USB-C, <clears throat> excuse me, it's still, it's still early in the morning. And um, the beauty of these kinds of mics, right, <clears throat> when you've you've gone to when you've gone to a rock concert or you've gone to some kind of concert and you see that microphone that's up on the platform, that's a Shure uh, SM58. Uh, it's a very popular mic, been around for a long time. It's a hundred bucks. You could actually use that for podcasting. It's the industry standard for vocals. Everybody uses it, and it's basically a hammer. Like it's the best built mic ever. And if you could get away with that, uh, I'd recommend it. But in most cases, you're going to want to be USB, and the SM58 is not a USB mic. It's only XLR. Let me explain what that means because this is important. See that little round connection right there with the three plugs? That's, that's called XLR, right? That's, those are the mic cables that you see coming out of every other mic in the world. With computers now, we have the ability to go USB, right? That's that connection that's right there. On the ATR2100X, that's actually a USB-C connection. This is the old USB, uh, original USB mini, I think, or micro. I think it's a mini. So the beauty of this is you can take a USB cable, just plug it in the computer and you are, you are ready to go. You can take a, 
it also, it's like a sound card. It, you have an out, you have a, a headphone jack out on this so that you can do that. And then this, this right here, that little switch right there is a, it's volume. It'll control the computer. So you plug it into the computer, it'll recognize it as a sound device. And then you have all these options and you can really be out the door working with some really great audio very, very quickly for less than a hundred dollars, hundred us dollars. It might differ in your market and the pandemic has shot the prices up on everything related to this lighting cameras and, and headsets and microphones. So if, if you can maybe wait till after Christmas or maybe ask for it for Christmas or something like that, prices may dip as we get into the winter. They're just a little pricey right now. Um, <clears throat> with these microphones, but the, the sound that you get, and I get this comment all the time, it's like, and your sound, like I joined team calls and I joined Zoom with this, right? People are like, that sounds really good. Yeah, that's because I get the mic really close, right? People want to take these mics and they want to put them eight miles away and then they sound like this, you know, and you're like, that never sounds like, you don't want to listen. Imagine if I did the whole program that way, You'd, your ears would be bleeding by the end. Let's just be honest, like it doesn't sound very good, right? So that's why the, the mics are the key. Um, I also have an arm uh, associated with it. This is, you can spend $100 on these or you can spend $25 on these. They're available in almost any variety. Again, these are US prices. If you're in Canada, we had some Canadians early and they always pay three times what we pay here in the United States for stuff. I don't know why. Maybe it's their free healthcare, but they do, right? So, I do also uh, the, <laughs> yeah, same in Australia, but you got great healthcare. So, uh, with that, um, uh, you can you can purchase Rode or Heil makes these really nice arms. That's what I have. I have a Rode arm. But you can get, there's a brand called Newer, N-E-E-W-E-R. Hey, in your market, there's probably the, uh, a, a um, discount brand associated with it. This is one area where you can go on the cheap and because the arm doesn't really matter. All it's doing is holding the microphone in place. So you can get it in and get it, get it really, 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 really close. Okay. That's kind of a short primer on microphones. There are literally a thousand microphones out there. And now there's, there's even more because everybody's jumped on the podcasting bandwagon. If you have specific questions about microphones, just send me an email. Like I, I can help you on that. That's, that's one of the things I, I know a lot of. But you can literally, there's like a thousand. Um, the more you pay, the better they get to a point. So don't pay too much. But if, you're, if you have questions on that. Okay, that's, let's see, any questions on... Um, I've, got, I've got an extra question on the microphone just before yeah. we move on. Um, the foam bit at the end, do you have to replace that often? That's a new question. You should. Uh, yes. Yeah. And they're cheap. And you, yes, you should. Uh, they, get, they get a little spitty. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happens to it, right? You're constantly spitting. The virus, how often? How often do you uh, have to do it? Oh, so six, every six months, maybe. It just depends on how much you use it. Okay. Like. You know, give it the sniff test. It, you know, it's like, uh, 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 you know, replace it. So it is good to have one of those. They all have some kind of built-in, you know, these these all have a built-in windscreen in them. So if you unscrew, you can just unscrew the top and yeah, it's okay. That's what the microphone looks like on the inside. And then this is a little windscreen um, that, that you have there. But I like these covers just for that reason. So it's a good question. And then there was a question. Do they, do they help cut out uh, background noise? They absolutely do. So there's two kinds of mics. There's a, a dynamic mic and a condenser mic. These are dynamic, which means that the field, the sound field's much, much smaller. So you can see as I move this away, the sound goes away pretty fast, right? As I get it closer, it gets better. That sound field's only about this big on this, on this mic. So that just means if the washer's running or someone's walking down the stairs or if I, there's music playing in the house, it's not going to be heard. It doesn't mean it's silent. It just doesn't mean it's going to be heard as much. Condenser mics, some of the better, some of the better mics are condenser and they really sound good, but man, they'll, they'll pick up. I, I like, I can hear my neighbor get out of bed uh, sometimes on those because they're so sensitive, right? You can just hear everything. You need to have a kind of a specially treated room for those. So Avoid the condenser mics um, uh, if you can. They're just too powerful for, for what most people are doing. A good dynamic mic will do it well. The beauty of these, right, is for the same price as a headset, you get a diaphragm on your microphone that's like this big as opposed to this big. And of course, in, with microphones, bigger is better. So you can, with cameras too. 
So you get a little, you get a lot better sound than you would out of a headset. Sophia, you, 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 Sophie, you have a headset and that's a good, you, you actually have a really good one. You have a Jabra headset there that, that, that mic is really, really good. Um, uh, but it's not as good as this. So even as good as that is, these, these give you a little bit better sound. Okay. Let's talk about, um, lighting. Cause that's, that's the next thing. Couple things. Uh, with lighting, you want lots of it and you want it forward facing. Uh, Charlotte, when I was doing this with her in the morning, she has a lot of forward facing light uh, coming in. She still does. It's dark outside though for you, right, Charlotte, right now? What do you, do you have, what do you have for lighting uh, on you right now? Uh, I've got a, I've got, <laughs> I've got a, um, literally a light. <laughs> yeah, just a lamp, a diffused. <laughs> and, and, yeah, a lamp behind my one PC. And then I, I purposely turn my um, PC around because otherwise it picks up the, the hanging lights of my office so like this morning you could see through to the back of the office because it's night time now yeah. i turn it around otherwise those hanging lights are quite dis distracting so um but yeah the, the side lights are hard by the way lights are hard this is this is something it's not intuitive and a lot of people don't get this you want as much forward facing light as you can but light temperature matters so we're, I'm using an external webcam. You can use your laptop if you want. If it's a PC, it's probably not going to be good enough, just to be honest. If it's a Mac, it's going to be just fine, usually, right? They, they actually put really good cameras, in most cases, in their devices. If you want to go external, let's talk some models. Here's another one you want to write down. So Logitech makes the C9 series. So they, they make a 920, which you can still find. They're hard, but you can still find those. They make a 922. That's the updated series to it. That's the one that's going to, you're going to find in your market. They had been down as low as 50 bucks, 50 US dollars. Now they're like $150 because everybody's buying them, right? Or they make a, excuse me, they make a C930. Those are the three I recommend. You, if you can't get those and you just get a kind of a mid-range uh, HD camera, so a 1080p, you're going to probably be okay. Like you want to be careful with the really, really cheap ones. Um, in, in these cameras, the problem with lighting is in these cameras, the sensor is as big as the, well, it's a little bit smaller than the, the end of this pen. That's not a very big sensor. And so any amount of light overwhelms it. Um, and they're also light hungry. So if it's dark, you ever seen somebody on a webcam in the dark and it's just grainy and really bad and they're, it's barely dark for them. So um, webcams, as we have them uh, today, you could take for, for, you might have a camera, you might have like a Sony A600, I think, or something, one of those kind of cameras that have is a, has a USB out that you could plug in and make it. That's a little more advanced. You could do that if you wanted to. Those make really good cameras. For most of us, we're going to use, <clears throat> sorry, for most of us, we're going to use a webcam. Um, so lighting is key. Forward facing is really, really important. So I have, uh, let me give you an example. Let me turn my lights off for a second. Alexa. Turn off the studio lights. So okay. you can see what it looks like with my lights off. And now it's dark outside and I'm down here in the basement. And I have a pretty light controlled environment. There's just a small little window that doesn't provide very much lighting in here. But this, my, my camera is struggling. Now, if I had started this way, you may not have even noticed, just to be honest, but it's pretty bad. Let's turn it back up. Alexa, turn on the studio lights. See if she do it. She's stuck. I was going to say, does she ever like refuse or argue back at Sometimes. you? Sometimes she argues with me. Yeah, everybody does. So Alexa, turn on the studio lights. I've told so, you to turn on yeah. the lights. Yeah. See, she's struggling to get it done. Alexa, turn on the studio lights. It's, it's, okay. it's hit or miss sometimes, whether that works or not. But it is, it is nice to have hands free. You don't have to get up and hit a switch, whatever. So, um, so the key on this is also that I have lights that are diffused. So I actually have umbrella style lighting, right? So I've, I've bought some, there's a, uh, again, in your market, if you just look up lighting, um, what you want to look for is pretty, is the most inexpensive. This is an area where cheap is okay. <laughs> like the cheapest is okay. Cause you're really just trying to diffuse that light, whether it's going to be box lighting. And that's exactly what you think that is. That's just a box that goes around the light. and It's got a diffuser on the front. Or um, umbrella lighting also works. They have these, um, these reflective umbrellas. You can shoot them through or shoot. They also have reflective where it hits the back and comes out at you. The key is you want to get that light diffused, right? We talked about this in the first show. If you don't diffuse it, you get weird things in your eyes. You know, those little round, um, the little round ones where they have, you put the camera in the center. 
they will put a solid light inside your retina. And if you, if you take that picture, yeah, it looks. So that's okay. You just need to get that thing up in the air. Not Don't run your camera through it. Get it up in the air and get it diffused. I've even had a buddy who uh, uh, was a, he, he was a executive at, at Waffle House. We just lost him a couple, a couple months ago. But he used to use um, milk jugs like to just diffuse his light. So he would cut off the top of a milk jug and just put it over the light. You have to be careful to, you don't want it sitting on top of the light because it'll melt and some of those kinds of things. But he was ultra cheap and um, didn't, uh, he, he used milk jugs. So the key is to get that light diffused as much as possible. So up and diffused is the key on lighting. Those are um, in it all forward facing. In Charlotte's uh, actual setup there, she has um, a door with a window. And Jamie, you, you also have a window in your background which tends to overpower, um, a Sunny, you do, you do as well. The, the, the windows tend to overpower the sensors in these, in these webcams. And then you just have this, this blur of light, this explosion. Yeah, yeah. So Sophie's doing that as well. So um, backdrops. I, I, I don't like, I don't like uh, um, in my backdrop, I don't like any lighting back there for the most part. You see, I have a couple, I have a PC there and a, PC there and a monitor there and my computer's off on this side. I can turn it. Those are actually also dim. You can barely see them. Like when in per, when I'm in person, if I turn around, this looks like it's full blast, but it's actually so dim you can barely see it. That's how sensitive and how small these sensors are. So mess around with your background. I, I'm a cluttered guy. Um, we, we mentioned in the early show that Dean hates that. <laughs> Dean Jones, you guys know Dean. Dean hates my background. He just hates it. And so, um, but I like cluttered. I like kind of, I, I move things around. So like if you follow me on Call the Coach, if you watch our theme Thursday, this guy shows up in different spots all the time. If you go back, you, now you may never noticed before, but go back to the early seasons. You'll see things are in different places. I move stuff around and just to kind of keep it interesting, right? A, a Ranger Woo, Maximizer Communication Activator. I like to, I like constant change and things that we're doing. So there's no rules on the background. I'm not a big fan of this virtual background stuff that we've done. It doesn't mean you can't use it. It's perfectly fine. I just, I'm not a fan of it. I think it does weird things um, there. So Charlotte, I think that's a quick primer on equipment. Um, what kinds of questions uh, do you, yeah, any any questions on, you can type them in the chat if you want or, or unmute, but any questions on equipment? That's the hardest part, by the way. Uh, Jim, I had a quick question. Yeah. Um, it was, I've, I've recorded a few mental health podcasts internally in the company I work for, um, and we did a lot of those face-to-face. -face. So we initially started with a microphone between the two of us, which yeah. was a night, nightmare to get to the right distance. Yeah. And, and then and then bought lapel mics, which were slightly better, but to try and again position those so your yeah. volumes balanced between you was hard and work. And they scrape. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. movement, you had to be careful. Yep. And when yep. I knocked my tip my tea off the table, I thought, oh, disaster. Um, totally. <laughs> so, what what would you suggest is the best thing? Is it to have the same kind of mic that you've got, but have multiple? Yeah, two. I'd have two, okay. and one facing this way and the other facing that way for the person, and just get them right up, yeah. get them right up in there. You'll get some crosstalk on that. You'll hear it on the, on, the, on the recording. You know, I'll be able to hear if the two of us, if you and I were doing it, let's just say we're in the same room and we're across from each other. My mic is going to hear a little bit of you, and your mic's going to hear a little bit of me. So you won't get pure channels on that, but you will get, it's good enough. You want to get these mics as close as you can. Headsets are the other way to get that done, by the way. You could, you could do, um, Sophie has a, like the Jabra brand headsets, those have really good for the size. They have really good microphones and they're, they're adequate in most cases. That's, we decided on Jabra, I don't know, two years ago at Gallup and, and they've been handing those out. Mine's hung up right up over there. And I like them. I, it wouldn't be my permanent choice, but that's, that's a, kind of a way to get around that. Get those mics as close as you can. Perfect, that's a great answer, good, thank you. Good, yeah, good question, good question. All right, Charlotte, let's move on. So when we think about technical, then what about the platforms that you might need to, um, you know, kind of upload it to? And you, this morning, I, I, um, I was surprised that then, you know, there was one platform that you might record it on, and then there's a different platform that you're going to host it on, and then there's yeah. a 
work on this. So, so talk us through a little bit about, hey, if I were just starting, what might I need in terms of, you know, a platform or software? Yep. There's two, two different kinds of platforms you need to be aware of. One is a media host. That's who's going to actually host your MP3 file. And when someone requests it, they're going to serve that. They're going to send it across the internet to them, right? We call those media hosts. Same thing for your website, right? It'd be a company that hosts your website's file. So can, people can come and see your website. That's one, that's one kind. They, all they do is host your MP3. That can, there are free services that do that. There's a, listen, there's a thousand companies that host podcasts. Uh, as we think about, like, so we used at Gallup, we use Spreaker. That's the company you use. Maple Grove Partners is actually the company I use. They're a little private company, of a buddy of mine that does it. But there's companies like Lipson and Blueberry and Spreaker and Shout Engine and Audio Mac and Mixcloud and Anchor and Launchpad, uh, yeah, Launchpad and Red Circle. All these are hosts, companies, right? That, um, that they'll, they'll host your file for you. Um, some are free. Anchor is free. Launchpad is free. Uh, Shout Engine is free. You can do free if you want. I don't really recommend it. You kind of get what you pay for on those. They're okay. Lipson is 20. So even at the, even at the most, a very expensive host provider, you're talking $20 a month to host your file. They, they have some costs on both storage and bandwidth. If you get popular, you know, they're, 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 it's not free to move data across the internet. So they're, they're paying for that as well. That's a media host. Who you go with, that's the debate in all the podcasting circles that I'm in. And every podcast about podcasting, there's all they do is talk about host providers. And that's okay. Pick one and go forward with it. And there's some advantages and disadvantages. If you have some questions, contact me. It's a, it, it's a more in-depth conversation. Um, by the way, if you do contact me, I'll just call you. It's just a lot easier to do it that way. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot more fun. So if you have some questions, you can do it that way. Um, then there's a recording. You, you, you have a service that helps you record. You could, in the old days, we called each other on Skype, and then we used local recording to record that conversation. You had to do all kinds of gymnastics with Mix Minus and all kinds of crazy things to get that done. Um, it took, if Microsoft would have actually provided recording in Skype early, they would have dominated the market and they just didn't. It's too bad. So, um, uh, but it's there now and you get it through teams or through zoom. You could do it that way. Not a big fan of zoom recordings cause they use variable bit, variable bit rate in the recording for their audio, which means if you don't have the right, uh, if you go to edit it and you don't have the right editor and you don't know what you're doing, the audio and video are going to get out of sync. So I don't recommend using zoom for podcast recording. A lot of folks do cause it's easy. It's what you learn during the pandemic and you're like, but I finally know Zoom. Don't use it for podcasting, okay? It's just not, it's just not good. There's some, um, there's some companies that do this, Simplecast. Um, oh, I think, yeah, I, I don't know those companies as well as I know um, the, the host providers. But there are, um, there are companies that you can pay to record podcasting conversations for you. And they're all just fine. They work. Um, we at Gallup, and I, I, this is my recommendation. I don't make very many recommendations, but if you're going to podcast, I recommend StreamYard. So that's what we use at Gallup. And Dan and Gage, who started this a couple of years ago, are just great guys, and they're really working hard, and they're really great software developers. And they've created a really easy platform to use that just works. It's nails. It works every time. So we haven't had one failure in the hundreds of times that I've been using it. Um, over there. StreamYard, just like it sounds, S-T-R-E-A-M-Y-A-R-D. They have, they have a free plan and paid plans. We're on the paid plan. I think it's 240 a year, so it doesn't break the bank if you want to, if you want to do it that way. What that allows me to do is send you a link that then we join together and I hit a record button and it records it both uh, to Amazon so that I can go grab just that file if I want to, or, and, I should have said and, or, it uh, also streams it to any of the major streaming platforms. So YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, LinkedIn Live, Snapchat. No, I don't know. I just made that one up. So um, it's because all the, all the kids, TikTok, that's what all the kids are doing these days, right? TikTok. So um, I don't know if it does TikTok. I don't know if they, I don't think they do video streaming. So those are the difference, Charlotte. That's the difference between that you need a host provider and then you kind of need a way to record this thing. Don't think about the way to record it. Just use StreamYard. The free, the free plan, I think, gives you 10 hours of recording a month 
for most people, that's just fine. It's a great way to get started. I like to, and I didn't say this in the first session, so this is bonus content for you guys. When I'm doing interviews, I like to see you. That's just my preference. I'm a better interviewer when I can see the expression on your face. Um, it's just, I, I do, I ask better questions. I'm more engaged when it's just audio. With StreamYard, you can do that, and then you can still just either download the video, the audio only, so you don't have to use the video. You can just use it for the, for the interview, or you can download both and, and make an edit that way. Charlotte, let me, let me mention one more thing on this. Podcasting doesn't have to have video, right? For many of you who, who watch on Call to Coach or Theme Thursday, I'm a live first record, um, a one-take wonder. We do, we do very few edits. That's just the way I started podcasting, and that's just my method. But there's plenty of different ways to do this. Like you can, you can do it NPR style, which is um, – is to re, re, do a bunch of recording and then just high, high, high quality edits. Like they are really, re, everything NPR does is great. If you ever, if you haven't listened to an NPR podcast, I, my recommendation is Radio Lab. I think those guys are doing it better than anybody else over there. Um, but certainly the Michelle Obamas and the Joe Rogans of the world who are super popular right now um, are just interview style. It's, it's what I do. It's what I do on Call the Coach, right? It's just an inter interview style podcast. You can do that way. Or you can do a monologue. There's some folks who are really good. My co-host on Ask the Podcast Coach, Dave Jackson, has 600 episodes of the School of Podcasting, and they're all solo. That, that just would not engage me. I'm not excited about doing this thing alone. I want people. I want people in my stuff. So what you do is completely up to you. Try to you know, try to make it strengths-based. Like say, what am I that, if I were to take my personality and put it into a program, what would my top five or top 10 say I should do? How should I do it? I'm woo, high woo in communication. So I, I like, and I like people and I like lots of things going on at the same time. So that's what I like. You might need a peaceful, record it in segments, put it together later. You want to be more exact great. Like do it to do it, do it strengths based. do it. So it fits your personality. All right. I'll stop talking there for a second. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not you. Part of me is going, you know, when you were talking this morning about, uh, and, and you know, you're, you'll touch on that in terms of how long it might take to edit. I'm like, I am too lazy to go and edit anything <laughs> or not lazy. Sorry. I take now, that back. There are other there things are, to do. Charlotte. There we are other, other things, things I could be doing. Yeah, that's right. My activator arranger could be doing other things than editing. So I think I would be like you that I'd be uh, not a, you know, a, a one hit wonder, but it would be, I, I'd do it and, and like, if there's some bloopers in there, there's some bloopers in there. Unless they were really bad, if they were really bad, then I might cut it. But yeah, yeah I know other people would be like, no, no, that was not right. I'm going to re-edit that, or I'm going to do it, or I'm going to cut it, or make it perfect. So I think it really does, you know, play to your um, play to your play to your strengths. So, so Sophie asked a great question. She says, any ideas on ideal timing for a podcast? And this is the the eternally debated question in podcasting circles. Is how long do I make this thing? In conventional wisdom, if you ask folks, how long should a YouTube video be? It's seven minutes. That's like stupid. That's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, to be honest. Uh, with podcasts, they say 20 because that's the time of the average commute, but nobody's commuting anymore for the most part. I shouldn't say nobody. There, we have plenty of essential workers that are still going in. So I don't want to be insensitive to them. Um, I think that's all garbage, just to be honest. So my daughter, who's a zillennial, right? She's in that in, in between Gen Z and a millennial. She's 21. She listens to a four-hour D&D podcast every week. Four hours. Four. Like, I, I won't even listen to that. That's too long for me. I do. Um, uh, so my, my kind of one of my secret sins is I, I love cigars. And so I started listening to this cigar podcast called The Cigar Authority. It's a two-hour podcast. It's interesting to me. Like, it's a niche that I'm, that I'm interested in. So there's a saying. Dave Jackson um, says this all the time on school podcasting. There's no such thing as too long, just too boring, right? And so people will listen to, if they're interested in it, they'll listen to it as long as it takes to get the information done. So if you stay interesting, people will listen. And... Um, you know, I think the testimony of that is just in my own example. So Micah and I do theme Thursday 
people complained it was an hour, right? So we, we sliced it down to 20 minutes. But yet we still get 60 people who come out and listen to the full hour show. What we do it live, right? Because they're coming to listen to the, the relationship and the community. That's why they come out to do it, right? They engage in the community. They, they engage in what we're doing there. So another strength-based question. How long do you think it should be? How much content do you have, right? Um, uh, if you're interesting, people will listen. If you're providing great content, people will listen. It doesn't matter how long it is. So make it as long as you want it to be and then live with it. Yeah. That's and you ne you're never going to please all the people all the time. No. And I've, I've used this, I've used this saying before and it doesn't translate in America, apparently Jim, but it's, it's horses for courses. Like some people I know, you know, lo I, I love hearing you and Micah in that relationship at the beginning because you're kind of friends and I feel like I'm in the car with my friends and you know, you're, you're chatting, I'm just sitting there. Yet clients I've maybe sent them to, they've gone, oh, there's a lot of waffle at the beginning. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, fast forward that. And exactly. I, might, I might send them show no notes to say, start playing at 10 minutes or start playing at eight minutes or whatever. But or again, just give them the version that, Charlotte, give them the version that doesn't have us doing that. In that. Yeah. We, we have that version. You know, the, yeah. the edited version is stripped down for it. That's why we do what we do. You'll, next year, you're going to see us release some additional content from season five and six that's very short. And so, um, you know, we're, we're just, I, I think you need to have it in all forms, just to be honest. I'm kind of a guy that tries to get it in all kinds of different forms. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's just, Charlotte, you know us too. And that, that, that pre-show is designed to be, to be our connect to the community. That's why we do it. Um, and so um, that's its purpose. If you're just coming in cold on that, it feels a little weird probably for some people. You have to kind of, so anyways, you're right. You're never going to please everybody. Don't try. Just, just um, do this. Think about this. I, back when I first started blogging in 05, my very first blog, I said, listen, there's going to be misspellings. There's going to be grammatical errors. I'm not doing this for you. I'm blogging for me. This is for my own. This is for my own well-being. I need this. I need this time, right? I wrote all these things in my very first blog. Uh, I just translated that into podcasting too. I don't really care if anybody listens, to be honest. It's great. It's a bonus when folks do, but I, um, I podcast for me. And, and then if, it, if people want to listen, awesome bonus, right? But, but you got to figure out why you're doing it. Um, for me, it's, oh, it's a way for me to learn. Listen, I was a tech guy at Gallup. Like that's what I was. I wasn't a strengths guy. I was a tech guy. I just helped them figure out how to put all the pieces together so we could kind of do this thing and then fell into this role that I do here at Gallup. There's still people who are like, like, what are you, what's he doing over there? You know, at Gallup, right? Cause it's just so different from, from anything else. Uh, a lot of people do now it's getting more accepted in the community and that's, and that's fine, but find what works for you in that and do it, do it that way. You mentioned a number this morning, Jim, about, you know, if it was one hour podcasting, it might oh, yeah. take you, say, six hours to, to, to make. Talk us a little bit around, around that. Yeah, if you're going to start budgeting time, which is important. Some of you won't, and that's okay. Just you're going to dive head, head first into this, and that's okay. But if you need to budget hours on this kind of thing, it's about a six to one relationship. For every hour you produce uh, content, you need about six hours of either prep or post. So pre or post is probably the right way to say it, to get it all done, right? Schedule guests or record it or edit it or whatever. That's just a simple rule. In the, when you first start, it's going to be more like 10 to 1. And then, of course, the more you edit, an NPR podcast is more like 100 to 1 because they have multiple people on staff who write the, they write original music for that podcast. They do all, tons of edits on that podcast. So the, the more you try to do, of course, then more that number of balloons up. But six to one is a good number. Well, 10 to one is a good number to start with just in the very beginning. You'll get better. You'll, you'll find some more efficiencies and get it down to that six to one. I think I'm probably with Home Gadget Geeks, I'm probably down to three to one because I've streamlined everything. I can do an hour and a half. We do an hour and a half show every week on Home Gadget Geeks in, and I can have it produced in three hours. So you just, um, you just get, you get better at it. So Charlotte, I think that's, that's the, a lot of people underestimate the, just the sheer amount of time it's going to take, especially early to do these. 
So make sure you budget that. If you're going to do something like this, you budget that time now. Okay, beautiful. Now, you mentioned music earlier. Um, what's your thought on, on sort of, uh, and your advice on, on say, music and artwork? I noticed that the two things that... that yeah, that let's put the two together. Use. Yeah. Let's put the two together. They're good, completely different, but music, don't use it. Uh, if you can avoid it, it's it's best. Um, uh, music is a very tangled, there's, there's two industries that are old and tangled. One is music, the other is, is writing, is books. Um, you know, the book industry is about 400 years old and there's all kinds of just, it's just awful um, to, to write things and try and get a book published and some of those things. In the music world, they're coming down really hard on people who steal music. So you want to, you don't, you won't want to take anything published that anybody's ever done. That's ever been anywhere that had, it got paid for anything and put it in your podcast. Okay. So let me be, be really, really clear. Even if it's like, Oh, fair use in 13 seconds. No, don't do it. Do not use published music in your podcast. It never works. You're going to get caught. Somebody's going to come down on hard you, or you're going to be removed from you. You're going to get a takedown to your host provider and they're going to have to remove you. So don't do that. So um, pay for some original or you can, there's plenty of places you can go on the web and buy music outright. Lots of, of these companies now have, uh, have kind of podcast rights. That's a new thing because in podcasts, we're not just streaming, we're also downloading. And that's a, a you know, it's like publishing. That's a whole nother world. So um, if you're going to, if you're going to use music, bumper music, um, buy it or uh, my son was a musician and his band produced some, some music and never went anywhere, which was kind of a bummer for him. Good for me. Cause I took his, I took his EP and I, I found four or five really good spots in it and then yanked that out. And in my early podcast, you can hear, you can hear my son's band as, as some of the bumper music that's in there. So maybe you've got a friend who's a musician who, who will put together a riff for you. If you listen to the very beginning of Home Gadget Geek, so for all 459 episodes, it's had the same intro music that, that I used. By the way, I'm a big believer in this, that this, uh, you, you've heard me say I am Jim Collison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska, right? This is Gallup's Call the Coach. I say the same thing all the time. That's intentional because people, like, when, when, when people start first listening, they want to know they found the right spot. So um, Home Gadget Geeks opens with the same intro uh, all the time and the same music. That signifies I have found the right place to the people's brains who are, are listening to it. So I think, I think a scripted intro and some music is key, but on the music side, make sure you pay somebody for it or you get a friend to create something original for you uh, around the music side. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, YouTube in particular, if you're pushing these things to YouTube, I don't know what kind of wizardry those guys are doing over at Google, but they'll catch anything. We were, uh, we were doing a podcast and the guy was interviewing on a TV about this size right above me here. Uh, on this side, was playing an NFL football game. No sound, just the game was on, right? Uh, YouTube got that, and I got a copyright strike for playing copyrighted content. Boom. In a little, like, it wasn't even full screen. It wasn't, it was on a little screen about this big. They're getting good at that. So make sure you are really, really careful that you're not, you're not using copyrighted content in there. Um, and when you, you when you say copyright strike, is it like a three strikes and you're out type of thing? It is. Yeah. On YouTube, it is. If you get three copyright strikes, they, they take down your, they wow. take, they're getting serious about copyrighted content on YouTube. I say that. And then if you look on the platform, there's all kinds of violations, but it always seems like they, they've always caught me, like they caught me fast. Uh, that's through the algorithm. So there, maybe the, maybe the cheaters know of ways to get it done, but yeah, you have to be careful. They'll, they'll, they'll take you down. If your channel's monetized, we'll talk, maybe talk about monetization here in a second. If your channel's monetized, that video will get, take, you won't make any money off of it because the, any, any ad money is, goes to the copyright holder and not to you. That's a little more uh, out of scope of what we're talking about. But okay, so, so that's music. If you're thinking about music, what was the other one, Charlotte? Music and artwork. artwork. Thank you. So, um, at a minimum, you need, uh, so uh, all, the, all the hosting platforms, so you think of iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, um, uh, Spotify, those are all players, right? Those are, this is where people consume your podcast. 
they're going to really need one piece of art. So you don't have to have a lot, but they're going to need one piece. So they're going to need a 3000 by 3000 pixel, perfectly square. We call it album art, right? In the old days, we'd buy back in the eighties when the, when the earth was still cooling, we would buy albums, right? They would be big squares of things. You put them on a record player, people would play. Um, same, same concept, just square, perfectly square that has some art. I'm sure you're a great artist, but you're probably not. So that might be another thing that find a graphic design person to, to make some, you'll make a logo and you'll think it's awesome. And it's just, it's actually not. And so like all that stuff always looks good to us when we make it, you're like, Oh, this will be good enough. I look back at some of my early art and I'm like, that's that's terrible. What was I thinking? So get, get somebody who's good at it, pay them a few dollars and um, you could use Fiverr. Uh, for something like that, I don't know if you guys have ever used Fiverr before, pay $5 and get some stuff done. Not good for art, by the way. It's, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of those folks out there will steal other people's art and then give it to you as original. You got you to be careful on that one. If you're, you're, chances are your website designer might have something to say on this. So if you have a website and you had somebody design it for you, they may have the ability to just create one of these quickly for you. That, by the way, matches the branding on your website. That'd be pretty cool right? That's a good thing. The whole reason you're podcasting, hopefully, is to drive traffic back to your website or drive traffic to you, right? That's why we do these things. Hello, newsflash. Call the coach is a gigantic advertisement for what we do at Gallup, right? Now, we provide, I, I try, in, in, in exchange for me being able to advertise to you, I try to give you content. That's the, that's the currency that we exchange when we do those kinds of podcasting, right? Is I give you some, hopefully, 99% good content and a little bit of advertising. That's, that's my promise to you. Um, you should be doing the same uh, with your podcast. It should be an advertisement for something of driving something to some somewhere. You need to give the collateral you need to give away is great content, but you should have some, it, just, don't, just remember we do these kinds of things for a little bit of influence. Now, does it have to? No, you could, you could make it completely ad free if you want to. That's okay. But I think it's a, loss of a good opportunity to, to have some influence in that. Um, I said in the early, in the early show, I think if you're, if you think you're going to do some advertising on your podcast and, and why wouldn't you, um, I, I do on home gadget geeks. I'm a big hello fresh fan, the average guy.tv slash hello fresh. If you want to get $40 off your first box. Now it's not available everywhere. It, it, my audience is 90% here in the U S so that, that kind of works. But um, Bill, if, you're gonna, if you think you're going to take ads, and you can for what you're doing, there's no rules on this thing, you can. Build in some ad space, and maybe that ad space is filled with something with you. Now, I didn't have this, Charlotte, in the early session. So this is bonus content for you guys, okay? So bonus content. On Ask the Podcast Coach, we actually have the very first ad segment is what we call the coffee pour. And so I'll say, Dave, I'm super thirsty. I need some coffee. What's, who's, who's, who, who's sponsoring the coffee pour? And as I pour the coffee, he plays an audio clip of a, you, you can hear it filling up, you know, a cup of coffee because it doesn't make enough sound for you to hear that here. And then we have a sponsor that pays Dave to have that slot in the show. And so um, I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but these podcasts cost a few dollars to do. It's kind of, it's kind of nice to recoup the, in advertising if you can. And if you're not advertising for somebody else, advertise for yourself. Have a segment in there where you're being very purposeful about what you're, you're trying to do with it. The key to thinking of it like an ad is this. It takes, what, seven times? You have to say something seven times before people act on it, right? I think that's that number. In the ad spot, people will, the, the, the trick on advertising is, is repetition. So if you say it all the time in your podcast, chances are after they listen to it for a while, they may actually act upon it. So that coffee pour segment has become a thing. People wait to hear it. They know it's coming. Um, you should probably have something in your podcast like that, that you can. And then if somebody comes to you and says, hey, I want to advertise on your podcast, you got a spot already for them. And you can say, yeah, it's fill in the blanks, $500 a month to, to, to advertise in that spot. Um, if, you, if you gather an audience, it's worth it. So don't, don't always shy away. And advertising doesn't always mean you're selling for Audible or you're um, – I'm trying to think outside. I've, I've used only U.S. examples, but 
Um, there, there are others uh, kind of around the world. You, you may pick up some of those or you, that may become an option in the future. All right. That's, and is that's it, so, so, but, but on that one, cause that's a, that's a new one. And, and, and by the way, I think it's like bonus content for the people that listen this morning as opposed to bonus content for, for, for these people unless they're going to mm -hmm. listen to the other one. But um, does Dave go out and purposely find um, advertising says so like, you know, not only have yeah. I got to go and sell myself as a strength coach, but I've got to go and try and sell my podcast to get advertising or do people come to him? Like what, what, what have you both. found? Both. Both. They do both. It depends. Um, I had LastPass. They're a password security uh, company when they were small. They're big now. They're huge. They actually turned me down after a while. But for four years, they were they were kind of the lead sponsor on Home Gadget Geeks, and they they paid an annual fee for that. To they branded the we branded our mobile app with it and some other things. Um, and then I remember they got bought by Logman and got big. And I remember that time I Amber, who had been my rep, I sent her an email. Hey, you guys ready for, you know, you want to do another year? And they're like, well, and they, they said, no, they don't. they're like, ah, we're, we're going to do other things. The very next week they showed up on um, windows weekly, which is probably now the largest, one of the largest tech podcasts that's out there. So when uh, Leo Laporte does that and um, you know, they get 300,000 downloads a show and I get a thousand <laughs> And they went over there <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess if I'm going to lose my advertiser to a podcast, it's, it's, it's okay to lose it to one of the largest ones that's out there, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I sought them out, but, but from time to time I've had people come to me and say, I'd like to, do you, do you have, how much is it to advertise on your podcast? And that is a way to kind of recoup. If it fits, you gotta, you know, you gotta decide what you want to do with it, but it can be a way to recoup some of the dollars you're spending to get this done. It's nice when it happens. You can also advertise for each other. So it could, in the coaching community, um, uh, by the way, having a guest on is a gigantic advertisement, right? Or you being on someone else's podcast is a gigantic advertisement. So those are other ways to, if you know, if you want to think about some things that you can do to get your podcast out there. So Charlotte, both, it can be both ways. Okay. Yeah, I try and advertise for Richard all the time. So it's kind of what? I never heard you say <laughs> anything about Cascade ever. That's that's a new thing for me. I don't know. Hey, here's a good one. Do, do Gallup pay us royalties if we mention Gallup on our podcast? Oh, no. Shoot. I wish we had some kind of way to do that. Maybe in the future. Maybe in the future. There, there'll be some kind of way to, to to monetize that. No, we don't have a good... I know you were joking about that, but that's actually that's actually true is that influence marketing right is is what that's called and today there's no way for me to financially incent you necessarily to do that maybe that'll change in the future maybe that's a, something that's coming maybe okay good segue then into what's the best way to market yourself so i've got a podcast yeah. i've recorded it i've got i've got i've got a load in the can so i picked up a new term this morning about having some in the can um, what's my best way of getting it out there and finding listeners? Just, just like you would any other small business opportunity or getting work out, you've got to just hustle it. And so it's, I, I mentioned one is being on other people's podcasts and mentioning it. Um, spending some time in community groups where you, you provide, where people know like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a podcaster. He's, he's over at Ask the Podcast Coach or he's, he does called the coach or he's, he does Home Gadget Geeks. Word of mouth is incredibly powerful. Um, in that because you just know. Um, one of the things, so viral marketing just doesn't really work anymore for, for this kind of area because the, the big players are so big now. We, for years, we wondered when money would enter the podcast space. And in 2020, money entered the podcast space. So, you know, um, names like uh, Joe Rogan and Michelle Obama and, you know, some comedians here in the U.S. have come in with million dollar or more contracts. That's big money. For this kind of, I mean, it's Hollywood kind of money that's starting. I've to come never out. heard of Joe Rogan. Has anybody, have, have you, my friends in the UK, have you heard of Joe you guys Rogan? Know, you Hollywood guys know Joe Hollywood Rogan? No. Widely, Obama, I've heard of her, but not Joe Rogan. Yeah. If you watched it, it, here in the US, if you watched Fear Factor, which was a, which was a television show years ago, that was super popular. And then um, what else did Joe, he was a USC fighter. Doesn't matter. In the podcasting space, he's number one. Like he's wildly popular right now. Uh -huh. And so, um, 
might be that he smokes weed on his show and people, a lot of people like that. And so it, you got, it has to be your taste, but for whatever reason, he's real popular. He interviewed the president. Um, Mark Marin is another one, a comedian who had a really, really popular um, podcast. Um, so, the, but, but companies like Spotify are paying big, big dollars um, for that, for that kind of opportunity right now. So those kinds of the viralness of it is it's, it's, that's kind of one in a million. I wouldn't bank on that cereal. If, if you're familiar with the podcast Serial, they were kind of the last big viral podcast that was independent and small to go big. We haven't seen, I'm not saying it can happen, but I think good old fashioned hard work is what you're going to have to do to get your podcast out there and just network it. I'm a, I'm, I'm a very limited podcast girl. I'm, you're, you're sharing some other ones with me. If I was to share my podcast feed and my British friends would laugh at me here because uh, I've been here in 10 years now. I, I've got, you know, it's Gallup Call to Coach. I've probably got Lisa Cummings and her, you know, yep. Lisa Richards. And then I have the Archers podcast as well, which is a very British, old, long running um, country, country drama. Nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which most well, old hey, people listen to. But. What you listen to, like, you know, I, I watch on YouTube. I've, I've kind of become um, my new RSS feed during the pandemic because I'm not driving has been YouTube. And so I watch these DIY um, homesteaders here in the US that's gotten real popular, right? To kind of become self-sufficient. And I, I don't know why it's not like the world's in chaos or anything like that. But um, so that's gotten real popular. Not that I'm ever going to do any of those kinds of things, but I'm fascinated by some of the things they do. So I just watch these things on YouTube. I'm never going to do them. But Charlotte, it's, you know, hey, it's no judgment there. You, you, yeah. you have your own your own playlist. Yeah. You feature on most of them, but anyway, I have my own playlist. Yeah. Um, so I asked you this one this morning, and it may be the same answer, and it may be a different answer. I'd be interested to see. Um, so what, what, was your, what was your favorite experience, and what's oh, your yeah. worst experience? Like, what was the best podcast you've ever done, and what's the worst one that you go, oh, my God, that was terrible? Or maybe you recorded it, and it just never went live. So we'll do best first. Uh, so the best ever is, was podcasting at the summit. And it's a tie between 2019 and 2016. Um, not that I've not have those dates memorized. Um, you know, the, the early one, I got a chance to sit in front of a thousand people uh, live and podcast. Pretty, pretty incredible to sit in a, in a room with people around you and do this podcast. Um, that was pretty magical. I actually, <laughs> I didn't mention this and here's some bonus content for you. When I got done, I walked to the back of the room and I, I, I kind of, curled up in a ball and like it, it was so intense that that experience uh i might have even cried a little bit it was pretty amazing right to have this community that we'd built uh, all of a sudden there in front of me literally in front of me and behind me and to the side of me so that was pretty powerful um you don't uh, when i remember telling some of my podcast friends i got this opportunity to podcast live in front of a thousand people and everybody was like wow that's pretty incredible. And it was, it was an incredible moment. Um, also in, in 2019, you got a chance to be a part of this one, Charlotte, where we, Micah and I in a big room, 400 people, um, I got to do that again. And that was a lot of fun because we just, we, we were more comfortable with ourselves by that point. So we had a lot of cheering and laughing and funning and funny did, did i just say i think i said uh, you got away with it you got away with it if you would not picked yourself up you would have got away with it because i thought it's it okay i like to tell yourself. him myself a lot i, I like <laughs> to tell him myself a lot so um those were great the well, the worst one i already kind of mentioned to you was the very first call to coach which was just awful it just we looked scared and and i just i, I have a, i have a hard time going back and watching it the the key to that is though is that we did a second one and then we did a third one and we did a fourth one and, and then we launched theme Thursday and you, you don't get to those unless you do number one. And I, I tell people I'll this find oh, it and I'll share it because I think it's only yeah. fair that, you know, they get to brutal. see it. <laughs> it's brutal. I might, it might cause me to get, you know, go back to bed. The, um, the, the key to this, the, the key to all of this thing is you just keep going. Like you just do it and you just keep going. They're, they're terrible in the very beginning. You can avoid that, by the way, by just doing 10 practice ones that you never, you never publish. You just practice. This is a skill um, that you'll get better at as you, as you go along. 
So you can make 10 and then throw them away because they're going to be awful. You think they're going to be great. They're your baby. They're like, oh, these are my first ones. They're terrible. I'm just, I'm sorry. They're just awful. So throw them away and then, then start uh, that way. Those, they'll, you'll, you will thank me for that. You, you know, 10 years from now, you'll contact me and say, Jim, you told me to throw those away and I'm so glad I did. So that's, that's kind of a way to avoid that. But you, you get better as you go, for sure. Yeah, part of me is going like self-assurance with, you know, somebody high self-assurance, would they really go, that's terrible, you know, they're just going to go, no, it's getting that way. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you weren't what paying else? attention to that, I could tell you. I wasn't. Say, well, did you ask me a question? <laughs> no, you were reading the, you were reading. I the, was reading the chat, the yes. The chat. I could tell, sorry, it's like I get my husband. Um, I, oh no, your, your drink of choice. So you've got coffee mm. right now, but when you're podcasting, what's your, what's your drink of choice? Yeah, this is kind of a minor question, but I think it's, it's important nonetheless. When you're speaking into a microphone, it picks up a lot of, uh, a lot of mouth noise. So anything that's sticky is probably not a, a great thing to drink. So like I, in the mornings, I drink black coffee because that just is kind of just straight, well, it's not water, but it's the closest thing to water that I can, that I can get uh, to. It's always good. I don't have it, but I always try to keep up, a, especially in the evenings, keep a glass of water um, as close to room temperature as possible near me. Things like soda and wine are, are, are awful. Um, I can get away with a beer sometimes. That's not quite as sticky. Uh, and so in the evenings, of course, maybe sometimes during the day, we are in the middle of a pandemic. Let's just be really clear, right? So I'm not going to say I haven't had a beer at noon, but um, in Australia, that's okay, right, Charlotte? It's yeah. acceptable, right? Okay, yeah. so good. So I'm just being culturally sensitive. <laughs> that's what I'm being. So, um, but anything that you you know you you definitely want to keep, especially if you're doing live. When you're doing recorded, you can just stop the recording and take a break. You know, if you want to do it that way. But if you're recording live, it's good to have some kind of liquid refreshment near you. My my choice is, is black coffee in the mornings, and then. Um, I like kind of water or, um, or yeah, I like water in the evenings. Um, but when I do Home Gadget Geeks, we always do a beer pick as part of the show. It's kind of like, what are we drinking? So that, that shows up as well. And I'm, I'm not, I haven't, I've done a cocktail or two uh, on the show as well. So that's okay. It's okay. Just don't, you know, just don't overdo it. Beautiful. Now, um, I'd love to open it up to the to, to the floor. I've, I've exhausted my list of questions that I that I yeah. wrote down, unless there's anything else that you think I've missed, but I'd love to open it up to, to, to the other. Sonny just raised his hand. You can just un, unmute and ask me the question. Uh, yeah, Jim, the question I have, it's around the mic. So I've seen people do Instagram Live and like Facebook Live and whatnot, and sometimes they'll have the background music, which you've, you've gone over. So they'll have their mic, but they'll also have like the, the iPhone kind of mic in there. Why do they have all these multiple? I, I don't understand. <laughs> well, they're probably not using that mic that's on the iPhone. They're probably just using it for the, the earbuds. Um, actually, I'd gotten a question from the first time we did this about earbuds. And it's something I don't mention, but, but let, me, let me mention it here because I think it's important. Um, I use your buds, Y U R B U D S. They're actually designed for athletes. Uh, and they were meant to be in ears for long periods of time. Triathletes, the, 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 they were designed by a triathlete person. They're used to having or playing music for hours, right? During their workouts. And so these stay in for the most part, they have got their, they kind of lock in when you put them in your ears. They also have ambient sound that allow, so I can hear my voice, not just through the monitor, but you ever taken a pair of headphones or a pair of earbuds and put them in and it kind of blocks out the sound. That's not what you want when you're, when you're podcasting, you want to hear your own voice as much as you can. It'll just kind of keep you from shouting basically um, is what that will do. So I like these don't get noise canceling ones. You can go over the ear. Um, so Sophie has over the ear or on ear. You could do that. A lot of the old school podcasters that I podcast with, um, do that, that they, they like that we call them cans, right? You, you the, the can style uh, over the year. You can do that if you want. If you're just making an audio podcast, it doesn't matter. Like you can look however you want. Um, let's see, Holly, who in the first one had a big gaming headset on that had a mic. The more expensive ones have a really good mic that's on it. You can go that route too if you're not, if you're not on video. Even if you're on video, doesn't, sometimes people don't care what that looks like. So 
kind of all that to say uh, the reason they're doing that is because they're just using the earbuds to hear themselves back. It's important to me that I know exactly what's coming out of this microphone when I'm talking into it. So I am crazy about feeding the sound back into my earbuds. If you go just USB, that happens, but not as good as if I run it through an audio interface. I have a mixer here that I run it through so I can run that back and hear my own voice. It's a little more complicated that way. And if you want to talk sound, that maybe is better, maybe a better one-off conversation to have uh, at this point. But that's why they do it is so they can hear okay. themselves. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The other, the other thing it does, by the way, is stops echoes. So when we, you know, when you have an open mic, Charlotte, when you have an open mic and, and you're coming out the speakers, your computer is working really, really hard to cancel what it hears from the speaker so that everybody else doesn't hear an echo. So you've heard it, you've been on a call before, someone's been speaking and you hear just the remnant of somebody's, of what somebody just said, a little, a little echo. That's the voice canceling at work. If the computer's good, you, it probably 99% of the percent of the time it catches it. If it's not, you get an echo if you don't have earbuds in. So on Call to Coach, we require everybody have a micro, well, require is a strong word, but we suggest, strongly suggest. Everybody has a microphone and a pair of earbuds to keep the, the echo down. So you get an echo of my PC? I'm not, no. I would have let you know. If I would have made you put your head, if I was getting an echo, I'd have been like, Hey, can you put your headset on? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. That's why I said 99%, but I thought I could pick on you. Cool. Yeah, you can always. Everybody does. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Um, mine's a question for, for you, Jim, but also probably for everybody else too. I, yeah. I know I listen to podcasts are growing and growing. I listen to so many. I love storytelling podcasts, but yeah. that I, I always wonder if that's based on what my themes are. And I wondered what style of podcast you enjoy listening to. But if anybody else has got a style they listen to, it'd be in, I'm just interested to know. Yeah, I'll let everybody chime in first. Just unmute. What, what do you like? What do you listen? If you listen to podcasts, what's your preference? I listen to personal growth and storytelling ones. Okay. Sophie? Between storytelling, and it definitely is something to do with my strength, like you mentioned, Jamie, yeah. because I think empathy, you know, feeling what, uh, what others are telling. So for sure, has okay. linked to my strengths. Yeah. Who else? Janet? Yeah, I listen, yeah, I listen a lot of like story and book tellings. Yep. And then um, the other part is the interviews. So interview yep. like investors and like professionals. Okay, Rosalie? Yeah, mine is like Janet's. It's very much um, interviews. So individuals, autobiographies, doing life. I think I enjoy those. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie, what do you, what, what do you listen to? I mean, so no, you I, said I, storytelling, I, just, just so storytelling. A storytelling, I agree because of, as you said, I like getting into the feeling. There's something about being quite personal when you're listening in your car or your headphones, it feels like they're there with you. Um, yeah. But I also like comedians uh, yeah. and they often are becoming really big in the podcast market, I think. Yeah, they're going to get really big. During the pandemic, they are getting huge because people need an escape. Mm. Like mm. they need something funny. There's nothing like the world's not funny <laughs> at this point, <laughs> right? Richard, what do you, what do you listen to? Um, it varies. Uh, quite often okay. a, th a thought for the day, middle of the day, that usually sort of sets me up uh, for the day on that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, anything where she's got interviews or some sort of interaction um, on that, always helpful. Okay. Yeah, I'm a tech guy. I grew up on tech podcasting. And so I listen to a lot of tech shows. I also listen to a lot of podcasts about podcasting because that's just, that's just my space. Um, but I admit it to you, I'm, I've, I've, my YouTube usage has gone way up. And so now I'm watching, I watch a video every day from a farmer in, in Iowa, just across the river from us. He's not far, a couple hours from us. His, his name is Cole the Corn Star. And he's, he's hilarious. He's 22. And he's just farming and, and it's just his life. He just, he just talks about what he's doing. You know, they just had a big, uh, they had a, we, we called it an inland hurricane come through uh, here where we had 120 mile an hour winds and it just crushed things. So they're rebuilding right now. And I just find it interesting, right? That's just kind of the, that's my escape. I also watch a lot of Jim Gaffigan. Let's, he's, 
he is my favorite comedian and uh and so i watch a lot of him on youtube so if that jamie if that answers your question yeah yeah it was, it's, it's interesting a couple of the things you said uh, are almost about getting to know someone's life and story like the the guy that lives close to you you get to know him i assume from watching uh-huh. yeah. yeah yeah in fact he like every youtuber um this this happens to every youtuber is they get a stalker if they get popular someone will show up yeah that's charlotte in my case <laughs> um look at we're wearing the same colors that's kind of did you you copied me i've been wearing this all day like you were with me this morning so i've been wearing this all day been subconscious dressed, so it was, you copied didn't do me. it on purpose maybe i'm stalking you but cole just <laughs> just released a video where he uh somebody showed up on his property un, uninvited and that just, that always scares YouTubers. Like they just freak out when somebody shows up and like, hello, I'm here. I don't know who you are and I don't know why you're here, but it, we get, it's a testimony to how comfortable we get with people and through this medium. And I, and I think it's a, it's a great reminder of the power of influence that it has. And so as you think about your coaching, as you think about what you're doing, I was a tech guy. I didn't, nobody knew me in the strengths community. Right. And, and, and now still nobody knows me, but it's, it's a, it's been a great opportunity to, to influence you all through these, through this kind of medium. And so that's the power. Again, that's the power of the podcast, I think is then do it in a way that works for you. So it's sustainable, but, but um, it's, it's a very, very powerful thing. Jim, I know you've been guests on other coaches podcasts um uh do you listen to other coaches podcasts and if so which is your favorite well lisa you mentioned lisa she does she's she is kind of the standard uh by which i judge a lot even my own uh podcast uh, oftentimes so um uh lisa does a really nice job i don't i yeah um i don't i've got them i have many of them marked but i haven't been listened to it during the pandemic i've been uh, pretty busy and have not been listening to maybe as many as I can. I do see them when I see them online, sometimes I'll pop in and listen to the first 15 or 20 minutes to see what folks are talking about. Um, Murray does a nice job too on his, uh, Murray Guest does a nice job on his podcasts. So those are a couple, let's say it again. Have you been on his yet? Uh, That's a good question. I think I have. (laughs) Should I know that? I should probably (laughs) know that, shouldn't I? We'll edit that bit out, don't worry. I think I'm trying to remember if he published it. I well, if so. you haven't been on it, then then there's an opportunity that you go, "Hey, Murray, I want to be on your podcast." Yeah, I'm actually um, not on as many as you think, Charlotte. Ugh. That I don't. There's there's more out there than I've been on. So uh, for for some reason, some some people worry about asking me. Yeah, uh, you know, as a parent from this conversation, I'll come and talk about anything. Well, as long as it's podcasting, that's what that's what I like to talk about. So. Uh, any other questions from anybody else? Uh, second in a row, we didn't get any domain color questions. Come on, that's been the talk of the town for the last six months. No, no, no questions on domain colors, huh? I'm a little disappointed. You'll, you'll get it tomorrow from one of the people on the call here. <laughs> what? They changed the colors? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, Rip Van Winkle. But, but, uh, sorry, we've been talking about it for 12 months. This, can I, so can I just, is it okay if I just, um, confess to you guys? Okay. Just between us. Okay. It's funny around this, this. So back in, uh, October 2019, so almost a year ago, we had just come off the GSC conversion and there's a lot of times we just didn't give you guys enough time to, to respond to things. And it, it, it really made me mad. So I told Austin, he's like, Hey, I remember he, I had this call with him. He's like, we have to change the domain colors. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, we've done a complete audit. It's not ADA compliant. We've got some other issues with it. Like we're going to have to change. And I'm like, okay, we are going to tell the community. Like, and we're going to tell them early and we're going to tell them often. And uh, he's like, I don't know, Jim. I'm like, no, no, Austin, this will be the right thing to do. Let's just tell him. So sure enough, I think in November we came, Hey, we're changing the colors. We really thought we'd have be changing them in January <laughs> to be honest. So we started telling you guys in November, well, this has been the, we drug this thing out 
it took us forever to get this thing done. And there's just a lot, it was a lot more complicated than we thought it was going to be to get it changed out internally and all the internal communication with you guys as well. And so it's, it has been the longest nine months of like, oh, so, so when are they changing? 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 Like, Type deal. So it actually went against me. Like here, I, I probably, if I hadn't pushed so hard to have it done, we probably would have, it probably would have had the, the, what I was looking for, which was four or five months as opposed to or six months as opposed to the nine or 12 month conversation we've had around those domain colors. So it's, I'm kind of glad it's done. Just to be honest, we got it out there. It's done. Murray, if you saw, uh, Murray posted a nice video. His son has, has some form of color blindness. And so his son was re responding to it. That was actually kind of nice. To, to see that with somebody who actually struggles with that to go, Oh, okay. Well that, whew, the colors worked, <laughs> you know, we tested them and some of those other things, but it's been a long, that has been a long process. And I'm kind of glad we're through it and done. So it's good. to Jim, Can I, can I just add to that? Yeah. Uh, I'm getting a lot of people contact me and say, why get up changing their colors? Yeah. As in it's complete shock, complete surprise to them. Oh, still like so they still haven't heard, even though we've been talking exactly, about it for there, nine there's months. There's a whole, audience out there who I just know. sort of don't seem to be in touch yeah uh, and I'm, I'm getting obviously a lot of people contacting me about it and just sort of explaining about ada and all that sort of thing but uh yeah richard um, you, if you do get if they're certified I, ping me so like they're not getting the newsletter although sure. i did have somebody say to me the other day this is super funny i was like um we've been announcing it for months in the newsletter and this person said oh yeah i don't read that <laughs> <laughs> No. I don't know what to do. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, do you get it? And she was like, yeah, I get it. I just don't read it. Well, I don't, I don't know what else to do. If you're not, like, if you're not getting it, then I need. Call. He, she wants a personal phone call from you, Jim. Uh, well, you know, it's just, <laughs> hey, there's a lot of info and I get it. This is why I, I, I try not to pass too much judgment. Cause listen, there's been plenty of things I've done. You know, he who lives in a glass house should not throw stones. Right. There's been plenty of times, even in my own internal teams, when you guys ask a question and I go to my internal teams to ask them and they're like, uh, now, Jim, it's been covered. Like we had like, you know, we have all these internal communication calls um, and they do it much like we do call the coach. We just do it internally. They said it. I just wasn't listening, you know. So just like a minute ago when Charlotte was trying to say something <laughs> nicer and I was reading the chat, right? <laughs> But I have to say, you have been very good at updating everything. And the same with okay. Richard. Um, yeah. I think it has been very straightforward. Uh, the when you open the app in Gallup, uh, all the reports are automatically with the new colors. In Cascade, yeah. it was very well explained how good. to update. So I think, I think it was really, really well done. It's hard. The, the, this, yeah, this, is, this was, I thought this was going to be a slam dunk compared to what we had to do when we converted on off the GSC onto Gallup Access. I thought that was hard. They still make colors. People <laughs> don't just, like change. It's mm. just been a treat. It's been a gift that just keeps giving. So it is, it just keeps coming. But Richard, thanks for fielding those. And if you do get certified coaches that aren't like, just ask them, are you getting the newsletter? Um, let me know. Cause I'm on a big rampage to make sure everybody gets the newsletter. We, we found that some 1400 were getting blocked. So I've been going out trying to fix that single handedly make sure coaches are notified. That's the other thing I, we somehow folks got unsubscribed and, and we don't know how, but they did. And I can't just assume because of laws, especially our friends in Europe of unsubscribe laws. I just can't blast everybody and say, Hey, resubscribe, right? That's, I can't do that. I can't blast them. So I'm sending notes, 1400 of them one at a time to folks to say, Hey, come back. Like you un you got unsubscribed. Well, everybody takes that personally. Like I never unsubscribed. I'm like, I'm not saying you did. I just said you got unsubscribed. Could you, <laughs> could you just verify for me and get back on the list so we can send you important, you know, information. So that has been, that's kind of, I've been spending a lot of hours um, contacting coaches one, one at a time to say, get back on the list. So hopefully you're all getting the certified. Well, if you're certified, I don't think you have to be certified, but if you are, hopefully you're all getting the, the newsletter. And if this is the first time you've heard of a newsletter, Jim underscore Collison at gallop.com. And I will make sure you're on the list. He'll give you a personal phone call just to double check. No, you will get a personal <laughs> phone call. Probably <laughs> that's that the people that shocks people. Why not? They're like, can I just call you? 
Really? I that, that was my very first call with you was when I was listening to the podcast and I was trying to work out iHeartRadio and you were like, hang on, I'll just get on call with you. And I was like, no, we won't. You literally, you called me and I was like, oh my God, I'm on the call to Jim Collison. It's like the being person. a film star. Um, uh, and, and now I, I, I stalk you all the way in Omaha just to come and mm-hmm. see you. Mm-hmm. Communications four. So let's just talk. Let's get let's get this thing, let's get this thing worked out, right? I'd, I'd rather just call you. So if you do if you do have questions, chances are you're going to get a call from me as opposed to email. I hate email. Hate email. Hate it. So. Even though you just sent Jim underscore Collison, but anyway. <laughs> well, that's because everybody. That's how love everybody loves to contact me. So that's that's the way to get it started. So, but I hate going back and forth with con- especially complicated things. I'd rather be obscure in person than via email. So other, we got, we got five minutes. Any other, any other questions? It, it can be along any of the, thanks for letting me rant about the colors, by the way. I appreciate that. That was, that's <laughs> cathartic. I think you've just learned that you've got to post like weekly or daily, the pictures and the image now, haven't you? So just, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. We, Riley, we have a new social media, um, a support person who's great. Riley is awesome. She's really got her, our social media act together as far as like those uh, theme images that have the five, you know, it's got the image name and the right color now and uh, and the various words, those have exploded in popularity. And so it's been fun to post those and kind of get back to strengths and not the mechanics of strengths. So it's been kind of fun to get those, um, get people. I read almost every comment that comes in on those. It's fun to read, you know, I'll say, what, what do you like? I think ideation, you know, what are your best ideas this week? And, um, that's gotten. Oh, 24 oh, okay. comments or so. And those are just, they're beautiful comments. Like I, that's just, there's nothing better than seeing how, how these themes work out in people. Jamie, you said about the wallpaper. I, I love the wallpaper as well, but I haven't quite figured out, and it might be a one-to-one, I haven't quite figured out how you get the wallpaper onto your Insta feed. But did, you see, did you see Ralph's um, explanation of it? Oh, no. So go, go back to that post okay. where you, like Instagram has been funny because uh, Riley, who helps me with this, she's, I, she's like seven. And um, not really, but she's like seven. Okay. So um, she was like, well, they just, you just swipe and push buttons and do things. And I'm like, Riley, like that's complicated. And she's like, I just didn't even think like well, these kids that like, they are so used to swiping and swipe up and swipe down and all these other things. And like, why can't you just put the wallpaper right there? She's like, that's not how Instagram works. And so I'm like, I don't like Instagram. So then Charlotte, you, you posted like, I can't figure this out. And so I actually sent her the link. I'm like, see, I told you, Riley, people struggle. Well, Ralph, Ralph wrote a whole guide like oh. in on Facebook on how to do this on Instagram. So pop out there to that thread and Ralph he even has a picture of a phone of an iPhone of what, what buttons you push to take a picture of it and where it goes and those kinds of things. So. It's, it's my list of things to do. I'll do it first thing tomorrow. I didn't realize. Well, I probably yeah, you, did ra- I must go back and look at Ralph's reply, not repost it, because he'll get cross if I repost it when it's already been posted once. I like it. I like it. So, anyways, Riley's done some. She's doing some good work there, and we're not all Instagrammers, so you know. Um, we'll be. Um, by the way, I'll give you a sneak peek. Uh, these uh, after this Thursday. Uh, we have five weeks of challenges coming up around theme Thursday and, um, and th- th- we got some really cool graphics and some stuff for you guys to go out and share. So we'll be posting those to the site, um, as well. And it's going to be kind of fun five weeks of kind of really intentionally focusing on season six and some things that you can do with those that you coach around that. So some ideas of some ways to share those resources uh, to get it done. And then we'll wrap the season final wrap on November 5th. Well, that's close to election day. That might be election day. Holy cow. The U S is going to explode by the way. It's been super nice knowing you all who are anybody in the U S who who's in the U S no, be glad. Uh, Ashanti. Are you not? Yeah. Ashanti's in the U S. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, US. I'm here. Okay. With you. Well, golly, <laughs> it's crazy here right now. So just crazy. We just watch and laugh. 
Well, this November will be an interesting one, to say the least. So we've got we've got our work cut out for us. You have. Well, anybody got any parting questions? Otherwise, we'll let Jim go and get on with the rest of his day, and I'll go to bed, and I'll let you guys go have but some lunch. Just and... let you know the coffee pour is sponsored by Called the Coach. Get all your coaching <laughs> needs. Keep up. Know what's going on in the community as well as great interviews, all available. Called the Coach. Just visit gallup.com slash Clifton Strength. Very good. Ah, oh, do you have that scripted? Like, have you got that in front of you or do you know it off? No, I just make that. I did. Wait, come on. I made that up. But you can, uh, the, by the way, the key not to that a lot. The other bit, when you do do the, this is Jim Collison for Cold Coach. Yeah, we have it scripted. That, you've got it on your PC to read or you just know yes. it by heart? Yeah. No. So the intro that I do, I am Jim Collison, live from Gallup Studios, that one as well as, um, just a reminder what do I say at the end? I must have to be there. To, oh, to say. Yeah, um, just, a man, just a reminder, take full advantages of all the resources we have available now through Gallup Access. Okay, that, all that stuff is scripted and I just read around it. So the, the, the best way to do, I think the best way to do both an intro and an outro are script it. Then, get, then, then read it like, and read it out loud like a thousand times. So you get super comfortable with it. And then it sounds like you're not scripted it's not scripted, but it is. And I think it's really, really key because in the outro, there's like seven call to actions in there that I need to make sure I get in all the time, mm -hmm. right? Visit gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. Join us on our Facebook group. You can follow us on Eventbrite. Make sure you sign up for a course. Come to the summit. Get the, the, the LinkedIn. All those things I want to make sure I get in every time I do that. If I leave that up to my own brain, it's not going to happen. So I, I do script that. I mentioned that Micah scripts... Um, season six has been heavily scripted and she just, she scripts it and then dances around it. It's a really effective way of making sure you're getting the right content. And it takes a little bit of practice. Mike is particularly good at this. So that, that the, the talent also helps with that. Yeah, I have question. A, another question actually, but um, yeah. a comment for everyone around the summit. So that was my first time to the summit and like I was really blown away with how, easy it was and, 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 and it, it was just amazing actually. And then even the after. And just to show you the difference, uh, I, I enjoy public speaking, so I'm in Toastmasters as well. And they have their annual conference, um, usually in the US. And I went and it was online. And just to let you know, like how much I appreciated Gallup that day, the first day, they crashed. They, you, no one could get like, no one had access. So they had to reboot everything and you had to go in via email. It was a, dis and for the next seven days was a complete disaster. Now this is a, a global organization, yeah. probably yeah. big, as big, if not bigger than Gallup and complete failure. So, so it's hard to do. I well, appreciate you saying that a lot. There were a lot of folks who put a lot of hard work in to make sure that, and, and it wasn't me, but um, there were a lot of folks who put a lot of hard work in to make sure Micah was involved in, in that as well um, to make sure that worked. And it's hard. It's a hard thing to do to get 3000 people to show up online and have it work. That's apparently not as easy as we all think because if Toastmasters struggled with it, um, you know, they're, they're a pretty big organization. So, um, uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. Thanks for that feedback. Appreciate it. Well, Sonny, it's even better live. So if you have the opportunity when we're allowed to fly in the air again, I think Richard and I have both been, I've been to, you know, kind of every, every one. And it's, it's like an even better experience live. I, I kind it's of so joined, joined as long as I could, um, virtually this year, but yeah, live is just a, out of this world if you're in some way if you're in Omaha for five days with a whole load of other strengths nerds like you that all talk the same language and you walk down the street and you get on the bus or you get in a taxi or you go to the airport and it's just strengths nerds everywhere and it's it's an amazing and then you form beautiful friendships with people all around the world yeah. and get even deeper friendships if you had the opportunity to go live I highly highly recommend it it's yeah you know I 100% I would I'm uh, this is I'll leave you guys all with a cliffhanger. I'm one of those mysterious people that's not allowed to go to the States. I used to be not allowed to the States. So thank you, uh, Mr. Well, Trump. 
<laughs> we'll thank the State Department for that as well as uh, s- uh, some other folks. So, um, well, um, uh, hopefully someday. Uh, I mean, we did we did an event in London in December, which feels like 1980. Like it was a, like December feels like it was a super long time ago. And, uh, and we had one planned for Sydney and, uh, um, you know, kind of a mini summit day that got canceled. Of course, it was supposed to be you, August. You meant Melbourne, didn't you? I did mean, no, I meant Sydney, but it's okay. I mean, Melbourne's, you know, it's the, it's kind of the, ru- the runner up to business. Sydney. <laughs> so, um, uh, hopefully someday we'll get back to, we'll get back to that. Of, I think, here's what I think, and then I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. I think getting together in person is going to be even more important in a post pandemic world. We've, we've gotten really good at being digital and just from the fact that we've been together an hour and a half and we've got to have this great conversation with everybody and I can look everybody in the eye is a miracle. Like as a kid, I dreamt about a day like this. I dreamt about, you know, my vision for the future was what we have today and it's super great, but that still doesn't replace the in-person time. And so I, I think getting together in person is going to be even more important when we're allowed to again, when that, when that opens back up. So really, really, really key, whether it's at the summit or whatever, like, you know, this isn't a a summit advertisement, although it could be go to gallupatwork.com and you can sign up today for the June 2021 (laughs) summit. Um, But I think those kinds getting, getting back together, figuring out ways to, to do it safely is going to be really, really important. Let me encourage you to try and figure out ways today to do that safely. However, that works for you, however comfortable you are with that to get it done. We need that interaction. And so don't, don't be isolated for too long. I, I am, I have been isolated too long. <laughs> I need to, I'm going in today. <laughs> I'm going into the office because I've even, even me who loves this form of media needs some personal communication. We are, the office is open at Gallup in a, in a, um, limited way and we're in masks and all that other stuff that way there everybody's practicing some safe social distancing but we need that interaction so make sure you're getting it if you need it so maybe some of you don't maybe some of you're okay hibernating away and if that works for you great but i think the rest of us need people definitely need people all right friends thank you great great seeing you all thank you so much for coming out you're very very welcome it's always great to see you Uh, and again this, this may be a foreshadowing of some things to come from me coming in 2021. So we may, we may be planning, just saying it's very possible. We may be planning my idea. A totally ripping your idea off, Charlotte, a exactly. totally ripping it off. Yeah. So another opportunity to not so much one way, like we do on, like we do on called the coach that has its place, but this is certainly as we dive into 2021, be good to have, um, a coaching community call where everybody can kind of chat. So if you have something that you want to say, you might want to watch the groups because you may get an opportunity to do a short little presentation of some sort and then uh, have a group call. So I'm not saying that's happening. Just allegedly it might be. I'm just telling you. It's, it's, a, very, it's a very good possibility. So. Well, thank you everybody for, for, for joining. And thank you, Jim, again, for getting up so very early in the morning to join us. You, 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 look, you look less sleepy than when I first. Oh, it was tough. <laughs> thank you for, well, it's 7.30. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. I think I'm going to go outside and run or something. So we'll, we'll uh, nah, it's never going to happen again. So thanks guys. Have everybody have a great day or a great evening or a great morning or whatever, whatever's ahead of you. Have a great, have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, bye. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Bye. 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 Bye